Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to My View, My Opinion, the radio broadcast. I am your host, MVMO. Thanks for joining me today. I love hanging out with y'all. I love reading your comments. Thank you so much for all your kindness and being here. I appreciate it. We got a lot to get to, as you can see from the length of time we're going to be together. Now, if you are a brand new listener just passing by, check the description box, okay? Anything you want to know is there about me, I mean. Now, let me tell you how we're going to set up our time together today. We're going to have two conversations. The first is what I'm having with you now is a pre-conversation because I got to I got to mow the lawn and and rake the grass. We got to lay the groundwork and get the foundation good. And then we're going to actually go to the conversation about Ebony. We're also going to touch on Jamel Hill, Star Jones. It's going to be a really great conversation. Now, on your device in front of you, you have some icons. You can either fast forward or you can cut it off. You can stop. You can rewind. Use that. So don't tell me to hurry up and get to the point. No, you just fast forward or you just click off. Okay, I'm going to really take my time. We're going to help some folks today. I I really believe that. All right. So let's finish the pre-conversation. Who am I making this for? Who is my intended audience for this particular broadcast? Any woman who is single, especially if you are a black woman and you are single. So that means if you're a man listening, this is not for you. So if you are a single woman, no matter your age, This is for you. I'm making this for you because at the end of the day, I don't care nothing about what happens with Ebony K. Williams. I don't know her, but we're going to use what's happening with her to try to help those of you who are single. Okay. so the second thing I want to tell you is this. I I need you single lady. That's what what I'm going to refer to you as to get a piece of paper and get a pen. Because I have an exercise for you that I want you to do as you're listening to our conversation, okay? What that exercise is, is this. As you hear me say different things, I want you to pay attention to two parts of yourself. What's happening in your head, meaning all the thoughts that are just going to be randomly going in your head. But what's most important is that I want you to pay attention to what's coming from the inside of you, how you're feeling on the inside. Now, I'm going to trust that you've done the emotional work to be able to distinguish your thoughts from your heart, because if you don't, what's going to happen in this conversation is your head is going to take over your heart and you won't be paying attention to what's really coming up from the inside of you, that will actually help you. Because the truth of your singleness, the truth of why you're still in the same position you've been in for years, is the answer ain't going to be found up there in your head. If it were me, the answer ain't going to be found up in my head. The answer is down there. Down there. I want you to think of the lower part of yourself as a spring where the water comes up. And as you hear me talk in the conversation about Ebony and Jamel and Star and everything else I may say, I want you to just write down what you sense coming up. For instance, you may feel anger coming up, you see, and you just write down, I felt angry. I'm feeling angry. Um, Let's say you may feel like you need to defend Ebony or defend another woman that you know is in a similar situation. Write that down. I felt like I needed to defend. The reason I want you to do that is because as I just said, the truth for you, see, you're, there could be, let's just say uh, 500 women are going to listen to this broadcast. All 500 women are different. Their life experiences will be different. And so will yours. So if you want to get down to why you ain't got a man <laughs> and you want one, you better pay attention to what's coming up on the inside. Because nothing can come up that wasn't already down in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up. Because you're going to be hearing me say stuff and some stuff I'm going to say on purpose because I want to see what's going to come up out of you. OK, not for my benefit, because I don't know you either <laughs> and you don't know me either. I care about you and I want the best or else I wouldn't be making the time to do all this. OK, because I'm cool in my life. I'm good. But I know because a lot of you told me I don't want to be single anymore and I cannot figure out what is going on here. I'm successful in every other area of my life, but this area seems to be where I struggle the most. We can help. We can we can we can help that. We can change it. <laughs> but so that's what I want you to do. OK, now. At the end of our conversation, OK, I want you to take some time this week. Maybe you can't do it today because you got to get the kids ready for school for the week or whatever. But I want you to take some time. And if you are a woman of prayer, OK, 
I want you to take that list, talk to God about it. Let's say you're listening and you're not a woman of prayer. That's okay. You say, I don't ascribe to any type of spirituality or religion. That's fine. This community is for everybody. Well, what I would want you to do is for you to, um, one of your good close friends who really knows you, I would want you to talk over that list with them. So you see, the reason I'm saying that you're going to have to take this list beyond yourself is because if you really, truly want help, you, you're going to have to get down to why all that stuff is on that piece of paper. And that's not something I can help you with because I don't know you. Also, you know, I'm a big proponent of go get therapy, especially if you are older in your life and a lot of time has gone by. We have to realize the truth that when a lot of time has gone by, that means things have rooted down deeper and deeper on our in our souls and they are hard to pull up and you need help. It's just like weeding out a garden. Sometimes you can pull the weeds yourself, but sometimes you got to say, hey, <laughs> y'all come help me with this here or got, get a tool and, and get, get, get down in there. You see, and you got to see yourself. If it were me, I would have to see myself as valuable enough to invest money in. And go get a therapist. And I always recommend BetterHelp because it's virtual. You don't even have to see a therapist. That's the first thing. You can just talk to them over the phone. But you get to choose their race, their their gender. You get to choose everything about that person. You ain't going to find that. You're going to have to go through a lot of therapists to find one that works. Um, But BetterHelp is is unique in the sense that you can put down all the what you want in a person. And then they just only (laughs) give you a group of people to choose from who fit everything that you put. It's very unique. The last thing I want to tell you in our pre-conversation is this. As you're listening to me, you are going to get triggered, especially if you've been single for an extended period of time. And you may, you know, want to um, stop and just start typing up, just firing off all those thoughts in your head. And you can. I mean, that's okay. You know, you can say what you want to say in the comment section here. I mean, it is a free world. But I will just caution you to make sure that, as I said earlier, your head doesn't overtake your heart. And you forget, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be getting helped here. (laughs) And all of that ain't going to help me. Okay. All right. Having had our pre-conversation, ladies, let's get into the conversation. All right, guys. So you have probably been hearing about this trending clip, honey chow. It happened about two days ago. Um, Ebony K. Williams, who's 39, <clears throat> keep that age in mind, is very important. Ebony K. Williams, she has a lot of jobs. One of her jobs is working for the platform, The Grio, and um, owned by Byron Allen. And the other day, they were advertising an, a portion of an interview she had with Iyanla Van Zant, who is 69. Keep that age in mind, 69. And uh, woo, this clip right here got people to arguing and fighting in the comments, single men versus single women. So take a listen. I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date If a he bus owns driver? the bus. If he owns it, if he owns the bus, that's That's a problem. That's a problem because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. (laughs) I'm not talking about that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who Mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver Mm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bunch. I know that. Yeah, I mean, woo. And I have not, just in all uh, honesty here, I have not seen the full interview on the Grio. Uh, I'm just here to talk about this particular clip. Now, 
here's the thing. Ebony is 39 and I know for a fact because she has come to my favorite TV show, The View, a few times. And I know that for the last three years in particular, she has taken some extreme steps to change her single status because Ebony wants a man. She does not want to be single. She wants a family. So for those of you who don't know, over the last three years, she has done this. She's hired a matchmaker. She spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars trying to change her single status. She still has a matchmaker, by the way, because I was listening to one of her uh, episodes of the podcast and she was talking about that. But guess what? That hasn't solved her problem. She still doesn't have what she wants, which is love. Another thing that she has recently done that you may not be aware of is that because she wants a family, she has now secured a sperm donor. So take a listen to what she said when she came to my favorite show, The View. This was in February of this year, February of 2023. You also recently announced something really exciting that you are going to start the fertility process Mm -hmm. and um, pursue single single motherhood. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I feel like you've spoken about this before, so I know it's something you wanted to do. I have to credit uh, all of you ladies at this table because one of the first times I was on as a guest host, remember, Sunny, one of the hot topics we talked about was the uh, anonymous nature of sperm donors. Mm -hmm. And so I got an education on that right here live on TV with Hot Topics uh, at The View. Turns out I now have a known donor. I went through California Cryobank. Fantastic experience. And at 18, my future child, God willing, will be able to know the name, identity, and last known location of their father. Wow. Anytime Ebony comes to our show, I'm always so proud of her. Um, She is just, she's not only beautiful and successful, um, but she's also fun girl energy. You know what I'm saying? And so um, they always enjoy when Ebony comes to. She's just a fantastic lady. She really is. You can tell that Ebony has her head on straight in so many of the areas of life that really matter. But what we heard in that clip from the griot was a 39-year-old woman who has taken some extreme steps to change her single status and hasn't been able to change it, we could clearly hear what she thinks her problem is. Ebony K. Williams said there, she has tried all types of men, races of men, ages of men. And we heard her say what, and from her vantage point is the problem. The reason that she thinks that all this time she's still single is because men are no good. They are not financially successful enough. They don't know how to lead. And she may have said other things in that interview. Again, I didn't see the full interview. I'm just here to talk to you about this trending clip that's been going around online. You see, not once did we hear her bring it on home. She really thinks her problem is men. And look at everything she's done because she thinks that's the problem. Still single still childless. And here she had right there in front of her an elder, someone who's 69 years of age, who's lived 30 years longer than she has. And Iyanla got to the heart of Ebony's problem. And did you notice Ebony rejected it? If you saw the clip that's been trending online, you could see the faces that Ebony was making. Men aren't the problem. Ebony is the problem. Ebony's attitude is the problem. Ebony has two major issues. Number one, she does not understand what really matters to happiness when it comes to us having a relationship with the man. Iyanla tried to say that. And the second problem that Ebony has is she doesn't understand how to choose men. You see, I love when the elders just get to the heart, when they cut through all of our crap, you know, stats are this and they say this and this, all the stats show this. Iyanla didn't address none of that. She got to the heart of the matter because, see, I suppose Iyanla really wanted to help Ebony solve her problem that the thousands of dollars, maybe millions, hasn't solved. Going around on every program saying you want a man that hadn't solved it either. And the reason her problem hasn't been solved is because she doesn't know what the real problem is. She actually thinks it's men. I've said this here and I'm going to say it again. When we are in the same situation year after year after year, the answer is simple. But very often we think 
the answer to why we're stuck in, in a particular area of life is complicated is because we're really just trained that way. You know, we, we always go for the deep and the complicated and we ignore the truth. The truth is always simple. If you've been single year after year after year after year and you don't want to be, the problem is you, 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 not anything out there. That is the truth. And I'm so sad for Ebony. She probably won't realize what Iyanla was trying to get her to see until who knows? It could be 10, 15, 20 years from now. And when she finally does realize it, who knows? None of us know how long we're going to live. Now, I suppose Ebony will live a long life, but I don't know that. I don't even know if I'm going to live out a fully long life. I would like to, but none of us know because time is not in our hands like that. But rejecting an elder, you see, people in the comments were criticizing Inyala. Oh, she's been divorced so many times. She's does that. She, she ain't da, 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 da. But see, that doesn't matter. What really matters is here's someone who's lived 30 plus years longer than Ebony. And we could say just by virtue of common sense that she has way more relational experience than Ebony has, right? So she was trying to tell her the truth. You know, I'm not in that type of situation, but I'll tell you something. If I were single and I met a bus driver or a guy who worked at the bank or a guy who, um, I don't know. Let me see here. Uh, what's something else people uh, was the bailiff at the courthouse. If I could check off all those seven things that we've already talked about, I'm not going to take time to go over there, go over all that stuff again. I've already done that. that. I've already given that time to those broadcasts. If I can check off the seven things and then get some of my desires, but he was a bus driver or he was the bailiff or he worked over there at the bank or what have you, guess what? I would not reject that guy because I understand what really matters to happiness when it comes to a relationship. It's not all that outer stuff. Is is he a man of character? Is he going to treat me well? Is he honest? Is he dependable? Is he responsible in his own life? And all those other things we talked about. You see, Ebony doesn't know that. Why not? See, you could be so, so smart and be dumb when it comes to relationships. You see, Ebony is successful. She's rich, I suppose. She's got everything going for herself. But what really matters, the thing she really wants, she doesn't have it because she doesn't see I'm the problem. Again, it goes back to simplicity. And she's done all this outer stuff to try to solve her problem and none of it has worked. And see, that's how it is in life. Think of a problem as a tree. There are the leaves and the roots. If all we do in life to solve the problem is change the leaves, plug all the leaves off or paint the leaves. See, if we just fool with the leaves because we don't understand, wait a minute, the leaves are a product of the roots. If we don't get down to what really matters, the root of the heart, the issue, get to the root of the tree, we're never going to figure out why the, the leaves, even though I pluck them all off, they keep coming back season after season. See, we're not going to get to this problem because we think the problem is the leaves. It's the root. The root of her problem is her. It's her bad attitude that she thinks men are basically just not good. They're just, see, I'm better than men. I'm this. I've got this. I got that. Bless her darling heart. And she's so beautiful. And she seems to be such a fun person and and so successful and so legally smart. But she is dumb when it comes to relationships. And guess what? I've been there. Haven't you? Those of you who aren't single, haven't you been there? And if you are there, it's probably because, (laughs) can I just say it? You've been thinking in a dumb manner. See, what I would be looking at is first of all, is he a man of character? See, that's the most important thing. Were you with me a couple of weeks ago and we talked about Wendy Williams and loneliness and how to make friends? Were you with me? If you were, you remember me saying this, you know, when it comes to successful women or rich women, they have a whole ch- different challenge when it comes to relationships. It's what's important. You see, I said, what's important that he can take me to Dubai 
or that he's a man of character. Because if he's a man of character, but he can only take me to Jersey, to Atlantic City, but I can take myself to Dubai, that is not a man to reject. Because what really matters to happiness is not all the stuff. It's not the status. It's, is he a man of character? Can I trust him? Can I trust that when he told me he was married only once, that he truly was only married once? Or did he lie to me and try to hide the fact that he had two more divorces? Can I trust when he says, I only have three children? And then I later find out, oh, he actually had four children. See, that's not an honest man. Honesty, character, all the things that make up character that we talked about, those seven scientifically based things, that's what matters to your happiness, ma'am. Not that he drives a Ferrari. Oh, it feels good to roll through the neighborhood. Yo, look at us top down in the summer, being able to carry your handbag and wear your shoes. But you don't know what he's doing at night because you can't trust him because he's not a man of character. He has all the outer stuff, the looks, the money, the house, the car, the education. But he's not a man of character. You see, you can't be happy. You can't. So what really matters is, is he a man of character? Because if he is, he is a, he is all that in a bag of chips, as we used to say. And that's, I mean, I wonder how many men of character who weren't six, seven or eight figure men has passed through Ebony's life that she rejected because, well, mm -hmm. and if you're being honest, ma'am, and you've been single year after year, after year, after year, after year, see you may know that he needs to be a man of character, but if you got the other problem that Ebony has, which is she doesn't know how to choose. See, maybe you thought, as we've already talked about, all the spiritual stuff matters more than character. Oh, you know how many women have tried to argue with me about that? Because they actually believe that. Although the men just, men will, men show that this is not true. Although it's not true whether men show it or not. You know, a lot of women I've talked to, they always, now this is an aside. I'm going down a rabbit hole now. Okay. I've had women over the years try to tell me, <clears throat> they, let's say there was a man at their church who was very spiritual, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't want to date any of those women. He wound up marrying a lady who had just been born again, maybe two days. <laughs> right. And she didn't look all that. And, um, they say, oh, because see, men know this. Men instinctively know what really matters. It's not how spiritual someone is because spirituality doesn't really mean anything when it comes to how happy you can be with somebody. See, I know you think that because you've been told that. And that's what they say at church. Make sure he, he's, does he pray? Can he lead you? Can he pray? Can he do this? Da, 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 da. Does he go to you know, all the spirituals? If it's something spiritual, you fill it in the blank. See, I could fill in the blank for you, but you know the stuff that you've heard. And women will hold out. They'll stay single year after year after. It's not funny. It's sad. They'll stay single year after year after year holding out. And here it is. God has brought all these wonderful men through their life who were men of character. But he wasn't that spiritual. And they still don't get it. And these are the women who want to argue with you. They give you all the Bible scripture. Now, mind you, they're as lonely as I'll get out. They'll give you all the scriptures and year after year will pass by. And then see, they get to a point like, as we've talked about before, Michelle McKinney Hammond, where now they're in their 60s, still never married, still single, got a collection of vibrators. And then they'll say, you know, maybe it just never was for me. See, like Ebony, it's all the men. See, it can't be that I am the problem. Because so, so let me get back to Ebony. So you may not have the first problem she has, but you may have the second problem. Remember, she's got two that we, at least that I can identify. She doesn't know what really matters to happiness. She thinks it's money, it's status, it's stuff. Owning a bus. She, and she also doesn't understand how to choose a man. See, Yala was trying to get her to see that. Would you date a bus driver? And the look of disgust that Ebony had on her face, I said, bless her heart. She won't get it. She won't get the lesson until she's probably in her late 40s, maybe 50s, maybe even 60s. I know someone I've shared this with you before. She's not a real, real, real close friend. She's kind of like a more of a close acquaintance, I would say. 
She's in her 60s. And see, she's told me all her stories. See, and you know, when you don't know people that well, you can't really get real honest with them because they'll they'll get angry with you for it. Like some of you right now who are cussing me out or telling me off in the comments, right? See, they can't. It's too painful to look at themselves. It's easier to just tell me off. So she's told me all her stories. And you know what I could identify? I didn't say this to her. I could identify God brought so because she she was in the contest of make context of I guess maybe it just was never for me because, you know, they do say that not everybody is supposed to get married. But see, in all the stories she told me, God had brought so many great, wonderful men in her life who would have made her a great husband. She she, she didn't have any kids either. And she always wanted a family uh, who she would have been extremely happy with. But she judged them because they didn't fit all the spiritual criteria she had. And she was comparing him up against this pastor and her favorite minister and what the man at the church said, what the single um, pastor said, all the Christian uh, guru relationship books, all that crap that they said. And she can't see she's hindered her own life. And so now, because she never could quite figure out why she was still single, she kind of just has resolved on. It's just that it just wasn't for me. See, like ebony. It's just that men are so terrible. But now let me move on. Let's talk about some women who knew how important those two things were. They knew what really mattered to happiness. They were like ebony, very successful, well-known women, multimillionaire women, all on TV here. They're making their mark in the world, building their empires. But yet they understood those two things. What really matters to happiness when it comes to us and our men and how to choose a man. Jamel Hill. That's our first example. Jamel Hill met Ann Wallace at a reunion, a college reunion. They had both attended school at that college, but they didn't know each other around that time. They've been married now for five years, but they've been together for nine He was a regular dude. When she met him, she was 38 years old. She was a multimillionaire. He was a regular dude. He was not rich, but he was a man of character and she was happy with him. And I suppose because she always talks about finding is that he met a lot of her other desires. You know, remember we talked about on that how to choose broadcast your two list, the basics of it all, the character list, which never changes no matter who you are, where you go, how old you get. That always is the same. That's the crux of the matter. That's what matters the most. And then you have your list of desires. See, desires don't make a quality guy. Tall, handsome, dark skin, tall, light skin, driving. See, all that stuff is great and it's fun, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to being happy. But Jamel, she met him when she was 38. They dated for four years and then they got married. And listen, they're one of my favorite public couples. And he was a regular dude. See, she understood what Ebony did, does not understand. Let's go to Star Jones. Star's been married to Ricardo Lugo since 2016. I'm not sure how long her and Ricardo dated. He was a single father. He had a son. He was a regular old dude, a lawyer in Chicago for a plain old law firm. And here we had Star Jones, who had been married and divorced from Al Reynolds, who has been on The View, who broke all kinds of glass ceilings, being the first black uh, woman on The View, uh, first full uh, figure woman in daytime television, um, who, uh, you know, really made a mark. You know, Oprah was one, but you understand what I'm talking about, the daytime slot when it comes to that time slot. Uh, Star brought full figure fashion to daytime TV. She was the first black woman to do that, have full figure models walk uh, on, on, you know, on a show. She's a New York Times bestseller. We could go through all of her accomplishments, but guess what? She married a regular old dude who she had something in common with. At the end of the day, strip off all of the successes. She's a lawyer and he was a lawyer. She, she focused on what, what really matters. What do we have in common? And star couldn't have children. She came to the view back to the view the uh, last year. And she talks about how, how, just how happy she is. And she has a son. She never knew this would be, this was possible for her. And yet you have, and star is 61. Maybe I already said that they've been married seven years. And yet you have Ebony who's 39 listening to an elder, but she, she obviously knows more than the elder does. So now as I end, I want to share a story with you that I've shared before. And this could be Ebony if she doesn't get it together. A thousand years. 
4,000 years ago, (laughs) I had a friend. She and I were really close friends. Um, She was much older than me. She was a minister. And um, she was a part of a church that wasn't really a church. They called it a church. I didn't call it a church. But she was a part of a church. It was really an um, evangelistic team, right? And it was led by this woman. This woman was in her middle to late 50s, okay? Well, that woman who led that quote-unquote church, she was covered by another church, a full-fledged church in a different city that was led by a husband and wife team, okay? So my friend was going to this lady's church and um, the lady, the evangelical thing. And she called me and was like, Hey, you know, we're doing this event, you know, we're going to partner with such and such. And it's going to be outside in the community. And I'm going to be speaking. I want you to come and support that. I'm just calling all my friends. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll come. I sure will. Now I did not know anyone there, but her, but I was familiar with the lady who ran that because she used to tell me stuff about her. Oh, we did this. And she said this. And I really wasn't a fan of that person. Cause I was telling her, I said, she sounded a little weird to me is what I was saying. I said, you need to be careful. She might not be Anywho, so anyway, so I I go to the event and it was great. It was really fun. It was outside. I mean, it was a beautiful night as well. Now, at the end of the event, the pastor's wife of the covering church, she got up and she was just thanking everybody for coming, all the guests. Y'all know how it goes. And then, then listen to this. She turned to her husband and she said, this is my husband, such and such. And oh, we've been married. Listen to this. For over 20 something years, it's been so many years ago. I don't remember the specific, like if it was 25 or whatever. I just know it was 20 something. And she said, oh, and and we have fun together. We still do this. Our kids are grown. She just went through. She was praising that man. And he was just smiling from ear to ear to ear. It was a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then my friends quote unquote pastor got up. I will never forget this as long as I live. I've shared it many times when I'm trying to help people. I'll never forget it. She went up to the podium. She put one hand on the side, other side, hand on the other side, and she looked up into the sky and she kind of squinted her eyes, you know, like a real deep spiritual look. And she said, as she looked up in the sky, I've been waiting on my Boaz for 26 years. You know what happened? That I could see, because I'm nosy, that I could see, seemed to me everybody just clapped. Praise God. Hallelujah. Da, 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 da. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Because even though all those years ago, I didn't have the language. I didn't have the words to articulate what I'm articulating you, to you now. I knew it. You like that too, right? You know how it is. Like there's some things you know on the inside, but you just don't have the words for it. You don't know how to describe it to nobody. Well, I didn't clap because I've never been one to get down with foolishness. It's just not my personality. I'm a fun girl. I I enjoy things. But if I'm in a situation where I can tell like some, some, some foolishness is going on, I just don't find that I enjoy that. So I didn't clap. And to myself, this is what I said. I feel sorry for her. I'm not going to clap off that. That's nothing to be proud of. She'll never get married. Because I could see she actually thought she had been waiting on her bow ass for 26 years. That wasn't the problem. She was the problem. And I knew that all those thousands of years ago. Now, I suppose there were other people in the crowd too who knew that, but they, you know, just to be kind and, you know, to be, um, you know, don't want to, you know, not clap. They probably just clap. But on the inside, they may have said what I was saying, like, oh my God. Okay. Now I want to help you understand the seriousness of what that woman said. Because there's nothing else she could have gotten up and said in that context that any of us would have clapped off of. We would have all known she had a problem. But because she said something that sounded spiritual and she had that look and she was, quote unquote, a pastor, people praised her for it. So let me give you some examples of some things that had she said in that same context, we would have all sat there and gave her a look like, girl, you need to go get some help and quick. If she would have gotten up there put both of her hands on the podium and looked up into the sky and squinted and said, y'all, I've been trying to find a job for 26 years. And guess what? I don't have a job yet. Let me stop the music. We would have all known instinctively, immediately she had a problem. Because, well, first of all, we all know 
that it doesn't take 26 years to find a job. Not if you're really looking for one. And then we also all know that jobs are available. (laughs) So it's not like jobs are scarce, not 26 years. And then we also all knew, well, she got up here and she made some speeches and we heard her talk earlier. So she can get a job because she's articulate and da 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 da. So we would have instinctively and immediately known she had a problem. Now, what her problem was specifically of why she hadn't been able to find one in 26 years, we would have had to talk to her, see? And we would have had to ascertain by asking her certain questions, you know, da, da, da. and then we would have come down to specifically why she had. Okay, here's another example. If she would have gotten up there, put both of her hands on the podium like she did, looked up into the sky and squinted and made a real spiritual look and said, y'all, I've been trying to get to Georgia for 26 years. And guess what? I'm still driving. We would have instinctively and immediately known, girl, you got a problem. Because first of all, all of us know Georgia is a real state. Some people in the crowd may actually be from Georgia. They may have actually lived there. People in the crowd may have actually driven from that state to Georgia to know, oh, it's an easy drive. So if you've been trying to get there for 26 years and you're still driving, obviously you have a problem. The directions you have are wrong because you should have been there by now. It's the same principle. If you've been waiting on a husband to get married, to start dating, and it's been year after year after year after year, and you still don't have one, it is not all that stuff out there. It's you. It's you. And the sooner you understand that and accept it, no matter how painful it is, you will move yourself forward in that area of your life. But if you sit around and lay around like Ebony K. Williams, and you can have it all together in every other area, but the area that you really want, you can't move forward. And you actually think the problem is stuff stuff out there. He's this and these men are that. You're never going to move forward. Next year will pass and you'll be single too. And the next year will pass and you'll be single too. And guess what? The next year will pass and you'll be single too. That's not what you want, is it? You know it's not. You know it's not. So what do you need to do? Let's quickly review it. I'm going to give you three things. The first thing you need to do is you need to change your attitude towards whatever it is you think is the outer problem. You see? See, in that moment, all Ebony had to do, or maybe after the, the, you know, um, the show, she could have went up to Yala and said, I'm sorry. You're right. Talk to me more about that. Help me understand more about that. Or can you recommend a therapist for me? You see, if your attitude is, honey, that it's something out there, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it could, doesn't have to be like Ebony. They're not, you know, they're not um, rich enough or, you know, they don't know how to lead. It could be like, well, men, there just aren't any men that are spiritual and men of character. You see, I just can't find that combination. See, it could be whatever it is. See, you got to fill in the blank because I don't know you. Whatever you think the problem or problems are, it's not that. It it doesn't mean that those things don't exist. It just means that's not your problem. (laughs) See, Ebony is right. There are some men out there who don't know how to lead. Some. But to to, to come to the conclusion that it's most men, and she said, I've tried them most, most of them or all of them. You see, she obviously has a problem, but she can't see that. And that's how it is with me and you, no matter what it is. Very often we can't see that we're the problem. That's why it's great to have real friends that'll tell you the truth, girl, or get a therapist. Somebody whose their sole purpose is to tell you the truth and help you move forward. Because see, all the people in the comments who were saying, yeah, that's right, Ebony, you know, successful women, you know, black men just don't can't deal with an educated woman. See, all that crap. So you're going to have to, the first thing is you're going to have to change your inner attitude. That's why I wanted you to make the list that you can see what's coming up for you. Again, can't nothing come up that wasn't already in there. So listen, don't blame it on me. I didn't put it in there. (laughs) And if it were me, if the roles were reversed, I can't blame it on you. 
The only thing that's going to come up out of my spirit or soul is what was already in there. So attitude change. How do you get an attitude change? Well, one way is you can go get therapy. Listen, you got to see yourself as valuable enough to financially invest in. And therapy in this day and time is nowhere near how expensive it used to be. Listen, I've been promoting here better help. I have a partner partnership with them. Better help virtual therapy. Does it mean that better help is perfect? No, but if you don't have a lot of money and you really feel like you can't afford it, it is very, very cheap. And with my code, you get 10% off your first month. You can get one month of therapy, meaning you choose the therapist, their race, their gender, everything about them for under $300. You can't beat that. And you, and if you don't know, you'll find out. You can't. Um, you can also do read some self-help books. A book that I would recommend, and I don't like doing this, but I will recommend a book by Lori Gottlieb called Marry Him. Check the description box. The links are there. The second thing is don't just mentally assent. See, you could be sitting here laying there going, that's right. I know that's right. That's me. That's me. See, you're mentally agreeing that it's true, but you don't plan on doing anything about it. That's not going to move you forward. You'll look up next year and you'll be single again. You'll be still single and still childless or whatever the situation is. Okay, let's go to the last thing that I'll tell you. Understand that you don't have to have it all together for the right person to come into your life. What I mean by that, let's say you're a little bit overweight right now. You don't have to have it all together. Let's say that you're in between jobs right now. So you're maybe not feeling that confident. You don't have to have it all together. Now, you do need to have character. Because even if you get a quality guy, if he starts dealing with you and he sees that you're not honest and you're not dependable and you're not a woman of your word, all those seven things that work on male and female, guess what? He ain't going to stay around long because no man wants a daughter that he has to develop and grow up. Just like no woman should want a son, a grown son, somebody she got to teach and train. Now, this person's lived 40 years. Baby, you should have already done all that stuff on your own or you should be in the process of it. Nobody wants a grown child. And the people that do, they have a whole nother problem. So thank you so much. Listen, every link that I've talked about, check the description box or the comment section. The links are there. I'm here to help you. Listen, I've already said my style is not for everybody because some people just want you to sit around and do what Ebony did. Men are this. Look at the latest stats. No, I'm an Iyanla. Guess let's get down to the root of it. You. (laughs) That's the only thing that's going to help you move forward. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you later.